With the character due to return in Season 2 of Star Trek Picard, Whoopi Goldberg's Guinan is one of the most fascinating characters in all of Star Trek, one whom we know very, very little about. With that in mind, I'm Sean Farrick for Trek Culture, and here are the 10 biggest mysteries about Guinan. Number 10. Who were her 23 husbands? Guinan was present at the wedding of Will Riker and Deanna Troy in 2379. There, she quips to Geordi that she was done with marriage, as 23 was the limit for her. Assuming that each of these marriages were binary, in that they were Guinan and one other partner, though who's to say that that's how Eloria marriages work, then it is a heck of a lot of shopping for new hats. However, there's nothing said about 23 divorces. This introduces the question, how does this arrangement work for Elorians? Are they similar to Denobulans, in which they can marry several partners at the same time, who can in turn marry several partners? This would certainly help to keep the cost down, perhaps they are time-specific in how the arrangements work. For example, we know that Guinan has at least one son, though it's never stated exactly how old he is, meaning that any of the 23 partners could potentially be the father. Could the arrangement not be one wedding, one child, dissolve and move on? How do Elorian marriage ceremonies work? Why, after all the years that Guinan appeared to be single on the Enterprise D, would she elect to remain single forevermore? Number 9. What's the deal with Q? That is probably the single biggest question that audience members will be asking themselves as Star Trek Picard's second season approaches. Whoopi Goldberg was invited in a very public way by Patrick Stewart to return to the franchise. In one of her earliest episodes, Q Who, Guinan squares off against none other than John Delancey's Q himself. She's able to adopt a defensive pose as he raises his hand to whisk her away, making him hesitate. Though they may never have been explicitly depicted, Guinan seems to have some sort of powers that Q is very aware of. She also has knowledge of the continuum itself, calling other members almost good people, making this Q an outlier. Is there a connection between the Elorians and Q? Michelle Hurd recently seemed to confirm that Goldberg will be appearing in the second season, as opposed to the third, so that may tease another standoff between her character and Q, though only Q has been shown in the marketing so far. This is one of the largest plot threads to be left floating in the air since The Next Generation went off the air. The very best of luck to the writer was to answer this conundrum. Number 8. What was in the Nexus for Guinan? In 2293, Guinan is one of 47 refugees saved from the exploding SS Lakul. The Enterprise 1701B arrives in time to save their lives, though it comes at a great cost. While on board the ship, they had experienced the joy that was being inside the Nexus, an energy ribbon that served as a portal to another realm, one that made joy something tangible. Guinan never described what she saw in there on screen. However, the novel Star Trek Stargazer Oblivion actually tells the reader what it is she she experienced. The refugees on those ships were escaping the Borg, who had come to assimilate their entire way of life. Their homeworld had been destroyed. In the assault, Guinan had lost her youngest daughter. In the Nexus, they were able to reunite, albeit briefly. When she was beamed away by Scotty, she felt as though she had lost her daughter all over again. In the novel, Picard is able to remind her that joy is something she could feel, which helps to rouse her from the state of depression she had fallen into. This is why, in Star Trek Generations, when Picard comes to talk to her about Sauron, she is able to understand the man's motives and his danger so clearly. Number 7. When did Picard first meet Guinan? The episode's Time's Arrow Parts 1 and 2 depict Guinan's first meeting with Jean-Luc Picard. This had been teased for years, not least by Gene Roddenberry himself. When Whoopi Goldberg began appearing on the show, he said that their relationship was far deeper and far more meaningful than anyone in the audience had ever suspected. Guinan herself echoed these words in The Best of Both Worlds Part 2 after Picard's assimilation. She explains to Riker that Picard meant more to her than friendship, more than family, and she was willing to let him go, understanding the Borg as she did. Star Trek Star Stargazer Oblivion depicts their first meeting from the other way around. In fact, this is the first time that Picard meets Guinan, whereas she already knows him. She doesn't let on, however, that she has prior knowledge of their old friend. In fact, it isn't until Time's Arrow Part 1 that she even reveals this. She asks him, do you remember when we first met? He replies, of course. She counters with, don't be so sure. This mysterious relationship is one that spans hundreds of years, while also covering mere decades. Number 6. Where do her tactical strengths begin and end? Age brings experience and, as an Elorian, Guinan has both in abundance. Her experience, in fact, is one of the things that allows her to understand people so intuitively. It has also given her a little bit of a sharp edge when the situation called for it. One such time came in Redemption Part 1, where she joins Worf on the firing range. He initially scoffs at her presence until she wipes the floor with him. With careful ease, she hits every single target that he misses before quietly smiling and assuring him not to feel bad. She was practicing this long before he was born. She keeps an energy weapon 
right where she can get to it, behind the bar and 10 forward, stepping up to use it when the crew was beginning to suffer from hysteria during the events of Night Terrors. She was also able to take on Picard at fencing, claiming not to like it, wanting to sweep the foil from his hand with a carefully executed feint. While the reasons behind her need for tactical training have yet to be explored on screen, one thing is very clear. Do not mess with Guinan if you want to survive the encounter. Number 5. How extensive is her surviving family? This is among the greatest mysteries about Guinan. The audience knows that she has at least one uncle, Turkum, who was considered the black sheep of the family. She invoked his memory when attempting to help officers understand Reg Barkley on board the Enterprise D. While it isn't statement, it can be assumed, however, that Turkum perished along with the rest of the Elorian victims of the Borg. Then, as previously discussed, Guinan must have at least two daughters, as she lost her youngest daughter in the Borg invasion. While the other daughter is never mentioned, here it can be assumed that she survived. Unknown also is the fate of one of her sons. She speaks to to Dr. Crusher about him, explaining that she learned a lot about being a parent by simply observing him. The fate of these family members is still in question, as is whether or not she still speaks to any of them. If one of her daughters did survive, are they in regular contact? Could she perhaps be located on the new Elorian homeworld established after their arrival in the Alpha Quadrant? Number 4. What exactly are her powers? There is enough intrigue and power in Guinan to make Q hesitate before attacking. To repeat, Q doesn't simply blink her out of existence when she threatens him. This is one of the oldest mysteries about this character, so what exactly is her skill set? Is she, in fact, a being that has more power to rival Q? By the events of Q Who, she is said to be identifying under a new alias, and is described as an imp by the near omnipotent being Q. The audience isn't shown, beyond a defensive posture, anything in her that could possibly explain how she could inspire such fear. In yesterday's Enterprise, Guinan is able to recognise that everything in the universe has changed thanks to the arrival of the Enterprise C into the future. Though she isn't able to pinpoint exactly what has happened, she has enough insight to know that things are off. By this time in their relationship, Jean-Luc Picard is secure enough to know that she would never insist upon him unless she was certain. He has enough faith in her knowledge to send the Enterprise C back, which restores reality. Again, Guinan seems aware of this. At least she is conscious enough to smile contentedly in the knowledge that things have been set to right. Though some of the novels have attributed her time in the Nexus as the genesis of this power, it seems intrinsic to her being and an incredibly handy tool in a pinch. Number 3. Did she have a son on Deep Space Nine? Martus Mazur was the very first character on Star Trek to be identified as an Elorian, as his appearance came before Guinan's reveal in Star Trek Generations. He was intended to be Guinan's son, a recurring character who was to be set up as a rival to Quark on the promenade. There were several issues that faced him from the beginning. First, Whoopi Goldberg was unavailable for filming during the episode's production slot. Thus, all mention of him being her son was dropped from rivals. Michael Piller commented at the time that the intention was to make him an ongoing player. However, Chris Sarandon was criticised for his portrayal of the man, particularly in the lack of chemistry with Armin Jimmerman. Therefore, Mazur was quickly retired from any planned appearances to follow. As it stands, he ended up being another survivor of the Borg invasion, thus was presumably aboard the SS Lakul, along with Guinan and Sauron, yet he chose to follow the path of a conman. In conjunction with Sauron, that makes it two for one with Alorians appearing as villains in Star Trek. Number two, what is her connection to Montgomery Scott? In the novel Engines of Destiny, written by Jean Deweese, history is altered by Scotty in an attempt to rescue James T. Kirk from his apparent death on the Enterprise B. The novel sees Scotty leave Starfleet after the incident with the Nexus, only to have a chance encounter with Guinan, who had been saved along with the rest of the Elorian refugees by the actions of Kirk. With her encouragement, he boards the USS Genolan, only to crash land on the Dyson Sphere, meeting her again 70 years later when he comes out of the transporter hibernation. He plans to travel back in time using an old bird of prey similar to the method used used in Star Trek IV, the one with the whales, and Guinan senses his intentions. Though he is successful, she does manage to alert Picard enough to send the Enterprise D back after him. This results in a timeline where James T. Kirk is saved, but no one was able to help Picard escape the Nexus. Without Picard's assistance, the Borg were able to stop first contact and overrun the Federation. Guinan, in this alternate timeline, is again able to sense that something is amiss, aiding Scotty in setting history to rights again. Number 1. Where did she go after leaving the Enterprise? After leaving the Enterprise E, Guinan continued to be a source of support for its crew. She transferred to the USS Challenger following Geordi LaForge. In the novel Indistinguishable from Magic by David McEntee, she does this because she can sense that he is about to need help once more with his heart. He has the opportunity to make Picard's vision of the future come true in that he is presented with the chance to enter a relationship with Leah Brams. Part of this story also sees the resolution of the disappearance of Sylvia LaForge, first shown in the seventh season episode Interface. In this novel, 
she, Scotty, Nog and LaForge find their pasts are very much in the present, which goes away toward helping to give her a bit more of a backstory. Guinan is present at the marriage of Will Riker and Deanna Troy in 2379, which is where she reveals to Geordi that she has had 23 ex-husbands, stating firmly that she was done with marriage at that point. While several novels have given further examples of what she has been up to since leaving the Enterprise, it now remains to be seen what she has truly been doing in that time. Star Trek Picard is set to bring her back, so it is on the shoulders of the show to continue her story. That's everything for our list today. If you could think of anything that I might have missed or any questions you would like answered, please drop it into the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can catch the channel over on Twitter at Chart Culture. You can catch myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter. And you can also check out my podcast, You're on Crackmate, which is available on both Anchor and Spotify. Whatever you do until I'm talking to you again, please have a good time. Look after your friends and family. Live long and prosper. Thanks.